Rebecca Robeson here, and greetings from Denver, Colorado. I'm in Colorado right now working on a new project. We're remodeling a downtown loft in a really progressive part of the city. It's going to be a full remodel, including the kitchen and the bathrooms. Wow, and I love how the lights turn on. And while I have kitchens on the brain, it reminds me of a kitchen series I did a while back but never posted to my channel. So today, while we're here plugging away on this new project, I thought I'd turn that series into a comprehensive video for you on how to design or remodel any kitchen. I hope you love it. And by the way, what do you think about that hair? Yeah, leave me a comment. Today, I want to show you some things about kitchens that will encompass every single aspect you can think of. I have some ideas that I just made up, literally. I swear I didn't take it from anyone else. And I'm going to share them with you. Before we get going too far, let me just tell you this. I would encourage you to do the same thing I do as a designer and start a kitchen remodel binder. You want to put some tabs of all the different topics we're going to be going over and then pull pictures out of magazines, take them off the internet and put them in the different sections that they apply to. Let's get our binders together and let's get started, shall we? The backsplash is the first thing that I pick out in a kitchen when I'm doing a remodel. I don't just mean the backsplash that goes against the regular countertops, I'm talking about the backsplash that goes behind the range or the cooktop, right where that hood comes. That is your focal point and that is your wow statement. And I do love this, this frosted glass tile because it kind of gives that, I don't know, kind of spa feeling. I apologize for the ugly blue cord. In this particular kitchen, we use something that is much more natural stone. Rather than being shiny and glitzy and glammy, it has a honed look to it. That's what our client was after. In this kitchen, we chose to do a traditional subway tile. But it's not just your regular subway, there's a twist to it. There is a satin pattern and a shiny pattern, a glossy version. So we intermixed those and came up with this great brick pattern. It turned out to be very subtle but just enough texture to give it something special. Just remember, the backsplash sets the color tone for your kitchen. I paired with that sort of glammy kind of a backsplash, this yummy countertop. It's a gray marble looking. Now you have to be careful about marble because marble does stain easier and etch easier. We found a granite that looked like marble and it's a gray white pattern. But here's what I did. I mix and I often mix my countertops that surround the kitchen with a different kind of granite on the center island. One of the things that I do that I don't know if a lot of other designers do, but I change up my edge detail on my granite from the island to the countertop. In this island, we did a double OG edge. If I'm going with something that's very clean and I want to be transitional, I often use a severe beveled edge. Kitchen cabinetry is kind of like furniture to me. I love the idea of custom kitchen cabinets. Now you can't always do it, but if you can, and especially if you have a small kitchen, it's really important because that's how you maximize the space. I love things like cubbies on either side of the kitchen sink where you can put paper towels. Just think, if you are doing this yourself or if you're working with a kitchen designer, think, how do I use this space? Of course, everyone knows you can have the pull-out spice racks, and I encourage you to embrace all of that. Now, here's the thing that I do in a lot of my kitchens. I like to bring my cabinets all the way to the ceiling, unless it's a vaulted ceiling or some unusual architectural space. I love cabinets that sit on the countertop. Do you know what I'm talking about? You've seen that. It's almost like a buffet. It literally sits on the countertop. I did a bunch of kitchens that way, but you know what I found? I lost very valuable countertop space by doing that. So I came up with this idea. What about create a corbel effect that will allow me to have all the countertop storage that I need, that space that's so valuable, but give me the look of the cabinets that sit on top of the countertop. This is a Lazy Susan, but the door goes with it. Windows directly behind the cabinets. 
Now in this kitchen, I had some stainless steel X's made, put on the feet and at the tops, just as if it was jewelry. I've used things like a little corner space that would be otherwise unused. We tucked the microwave in the corner, and then to the left of that, we put in a place that would hold napkins and paper towels. Now that you have your backsplash and your countertop selected, and you've already made some decisions on your kitchen cabinetry, add this to your notebook. And let's move on to the next stage, which would be flooring. In this particular kitchen, we actually kept the client's existing flooring, which was a light stained wood. In this case, it's one of the reasons why I went with the backsplash I did. It had a lot of that frosted glass, which is kind of a spa feeling. It went really well with that look of the light colored flooring. Now in this case, the walnut flooring, here's what I loved about it, has a really wide plank. Love this flooring. Now in this house, we have gorgeous walnut wood flooring throughout the entire house. But in the rooms where there could be water issues, the homeowner really wanted to not use wood flooring. But I, as the designer, wanted it to look like wood. So we came up with a compromise, and that is, nowadays, they make some of the most amazing flooring out of tile. It looks like wood. It even has that wood grain. So we got one, I took the wood flooring with me, and I found a tile that matched it almost perfectly. Whether you use stone flooring, wood, or tile, one thing I can assure you, those are all hard surfaces, and they're all a little cold. So, we often use area rugs in our kitchens. If there is a eating area, a nook area, we'll actually use a very nice area rug. And you know that area rug also gives you another opportunity to add color and style to the theme of your kitchen. I want to talk to you about the subject of kind of a big subject. This one is appliances. Let me just tell you, when it comes to appliances, I think it's a very personal decision. I love this. But I can tell you that sometimes you want to do a finish that's maybe a stainless steel, and sometimes you want to do a wood cover that looks like your refrigerators are actually part of the cabinetry, and it's more furniture-like. In this case, because the backsplash had this very spa, ethereal look, we went with a lot of the stainless steel. It gives it more of a spa look. It's very fresh and very light-inspiring. By the way, Huge fan of dual dishwashers. Do it if you can. I covered those not in the stainless, but I actually put the covering of the cabinet doors in front of them. When it comes to these particular items, I just want to tell you kind of the secret for me and what makes my kitchens, I think, look a little bit more custom is that I mix and match my finishes. In some of my kitchens, I might have a polished nickel faucet. I love that look. Now here's, here's a kitchen where I mix on the cooktop hood. I used a stainless steel hood and it has such a great chateau kind of a shape to it, but you'll notice that there's some trim on it that is in the shiny chrome. That gave me the ability to use the chrome on the faucet, but then the stainless on the ovens. It's kind of a fun way to mix and match your finishes and in that same kitchen, I used polished nickel knobs to use on each one of the cabinets. So you can see how the different finishes, they're not all the same. And here's another tip. On the refrigerator doors, I used those long, tall handles. I wanted those big, long, modern handles, but I didn't want them to show up. So I used on the stain wood, oil rub bronze. One thing you'll notice when it comes to knobs, I love to mix and match it up. Seldom do I ever pick one knob style and use it throughout the kitchen. In fact, I don't think I do that ever, now that I think about it. Now, if I hadn't pointed those things out to you, do you think you would have noticed? Probably not. You probably would have just said, wow, that's a pretty kitchen. Make it unique, make it special, unexpected, and make it you. Now we want to move on to the subject of accessorizing. This is where it gets fun. 
here's where I usually start. If you're lucky enough to have a kitchen eating area, which we call a nook, we take from the selections we've made so far, our color selections, and we decide how we're gonna decorate that area. I love to include window treatments in kitchens when it's appropriate. We've got beautiful window treatments. Look at these. Lately, I've had so much fun creating my own custom Roman shades. They're usually mock Roman, and by that we mean fake. They don't go up and down. They're stationary. That way they always look good. In this kitchen, the window treatment created an amazing first impression. I combined that with the stripe fabric that we used on the panels in the kitchen nook area. Do you see how the two colors connect? Lighting is everything to me. Lighting is one of the most important aspects in any room of a home that I design. I had dual islands and I had a kitchen table. Three long horizontal pieces of furniture, essentially, in a row. I chose to do the light fixture over the table and not over the islands. I have seen kitchens where people do it over the table and the islands, and personally, I just think it's too much. And then over the kitchen table, you see these glass balls. I added then some glass crystals to the sconces and made my own version of the same thing, just connecting the two pieces on either side of the room together. Kind of makes you want to cook in there. At least that's what I hear. I don't cook, so I don't know, but it makes me want to think about it at least. And take a look at the pendant lights I put over this island. Do you love those lights? Oh my gosh, I just think they made that island. In fact, I love that kitchen. That kitchen, I'm telling you, I think it could win an award, don't you? I should submit that for something. So that wraps it up for us today with our kitchen series on how to decorate and design your own dream kitchen. If you like this video, consider signing up for the design sessions where I take you deep and teach you the design principles that I use in my daily design business. That's it for us today. Wish us a safe flight. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you guys next time.